Hey everybody, welcome back to part 5, creating scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator using free resources. Today, uh, we're going to work a little bit in Blender, make a quick, quick and dirty small building. We're going to export it and we're going to bring it into the sim. The other thing that we're going to do is fix the problem that we had last time where our build failed because I didn't have any materials in my Tut1 library. And you're going to notice, probably, I can pretty much guarantee it's going to happen since Sim Update 7. After we fix the material error, we'll probably get another error. And we're going to fix that, but don't worry about it because it's just a quirky bug that has come out in the SDK, all right? So we fix our material problem, and then we fix the other problem, all right? And we'll talk about that later. All right, so let's start. Tut1 is our project here, and in Tut1, you remember, we have a package sources. So if you go into package sources, remember, here's our material library folder that we created. And we also have the model lib uh, folder that we created. And in the model lib, we have a texture directory now, or folder. Let me review here real quick. Let's go back one. Remember, in the materials, it's always a capital T S textures folder. In the model lib, it is a small t no s okay that's very important to remember all right so in our model lib we have a dirt, uh, folder called texture it's fine the way it is we are going to add a new folder to our model lib and we're going to call this one tut one house okay i use camel case a lot okay every word i i don't put spaces i I'm from old school, but I don't put spaces, but every new word has a capital letter. All right, so that's camel case. So anyway, we create a new folder called Tut1 House. That's all we need to do right now. Now, open up Blender, and if you don't have the Blender 2 MSFS uh, installed, um, go to Edit preferences and two different ways if you have the zip file downloaded you can actually get to that zip file put it into a location you know create a folder called uh, blender add-ons or something and then copy that zip file into that directory and then in that directory you uh, go into edit preferences you can hit the install and then migrate over to where you have that zip file for the add-on installed, select it, and then ins install add-on, all right? If you have it in your Blender folder, uh, your Blender add-ons folder, all you need to do is come over here to this search and type in MS and it's going to show up in the list okay in my search there's the MS FS toolkit just make sure that this check mark is checked all right and then you just hit the X out of there I already had it installed so I didn't need to do that okay all right so here we are in blender we're going to create a uh, quick and dirty house building okay you want to get as many prototype photos and dimensions and all that kind of stuff when you're making your models. But here we're going to do a quick and dirty building. Uh, probably won't even have any windows, just some walls and a roof and some textures, okay? Um, for you, everybody that's in the world other than the United States, you can come over here to Scene Properties. Oh, I don't have keycasts on. Let me turn my keycasts on. There we go. 
Uh, you can come over here to scene properties and you can change the units that you're working in all right metric or imperial so if you're in the United States you'll most likely use imperial <coughs> everybody else in the world will use metric I'm gonna leave it on metric okay all right so we have our cube and we're going to resize our cube. We'll make it 10 meters long, which is about 32.08 feet. Okay. And we're going to change it in the Y axis to 5 meters. And we'll make our overall height. Uh, let's see. Make our overall height. Well, we're going to make it 1 meter for now. Okay. And then we need to move it up because the origin's in the middle of the cube and it's below ground surface. So we're going to bring that up 0.5 meters. Okay, so now our building is sitting on the ground. All right, so we have a uh, one meter square uh, rectangle. And that's our foundation. All right, so we're going to go to edit mode by hitting tab. And do uh, face select I'm going to select this face here okay and we're going to hit the E to extrude it and we're going to extrude it uh, let's see three meters okay so now we have a foundation and we have our walls now we need a roof so we're going to select that face we're going to extrude it uh, 0.2 meters okay and we're going to go to edge select and I'm going to go ahead and turn snapping on and I want my snapping to be active all right so we're going to go into edge select and we are going to select these two edges that are on the y-axis and we're going to hit S to scale, Y axis, and zero. And that will collapse those two edges together to create our roof pitch. Okay, just like that. I know it's a low pitch. Um, but if you want a higher pitch, you can just uh, move that edge up. And I'm just going to drag it up to about right there to give us maybe a 4 and, four and 12 slope. That's more of a 4 and 3, but uh, 3 and 12, but that's close enough. Okay, so let me catch my breath. Okay, now, in when you're working with Blender and you're doing flight simulator stuff, you can come over here to the camera and the light, and you can actually get rid of those. All right? At least that's what I like to do. And if I add lights for lighting effect in the sim, I'll just add new lights later. Okay? All right. So we need to select some faces. We're going to select this bottom row of faces. And you can actually hold down your Alt key and do a uh, edge select. Okay. A loop select, sorry of all those faces that go along the bottom all right and then we're going to hit p to copy those or move those to a new selection so you see that show up in our list here and then right away i'm going to go ahead and name it we're going to call this foundation hit enter all right we're still in edit mode and i'm going to select these two faces so i select the first face hit shift select the other face hit P to, to move those to a new selection and we're going to call that roof and then the final one our, our default cube that we had to begin with we'll call these walls okay now we're still in edit mode Okay, now we're going to get out of edit mode here. Let's kind of clear this, clean this up a little bit. Uh, all right, we're going to get out of edit mode. Make sure that my walls are selected, okay? And then go back into edit mode. So we're only working on the, 
the walls. Now we're going to do some loop cuts to make a door and I mean we can make a window all right we'll make one window just for fun all right so we're going to come in here we have our wall selected and I'm going to control R to do a loop cut okay and since the since this wall here oh, let me escape since this wall and this wall are separated by the roof plane and the foundation it's not going to it's not going to cut all the way through the model it's only going to cut cut this face however if i do it in the z direction if i do it in the horizontal direction it will loop all the way around the building just so you know okay like i said this is not a blender tutorial anyway let's do a control r to, to make our loop cut and we'll make our starting one right at the center of the building. So that's a click, enter, escape. All right, and then we're going to do another loop cut. And we're going to click here and then drag that over to our first line. And then I'm going to hit G, X. And we're going to move it in the X direction 2.1. Well, I'm sorry escape G X one no let's go point nine meters okay that's about three feet even all right because that's a standard width of a door 36 inches and in, here in the United States all right now we're going to make another loop cut in the horizontal direction so I'm going to click here drag down but I want to move that one up. I'm going to turn snapping off. I'm going to move that one up in the Z direction. And that's G, Z. And we're going to move that up 2.1 meters, which is about 7 feet, which is standard door size in the United States. Okay, so we have this building. We made our, our cuts. Now I can select this face. And I can hit E to extrude, except we're going to go in the negative direction, move that in so our, it looks like our, our door is inset a little bit. Usually they are about two and a half inches or three inches. Okay. Now, while this um, polygon is selected, I'm going to hit P to move that to a new selection. Hit tab, get at it, edit mode. Don't have to, but I'm going to. Okay, go to this wall zero, since that's where that polygon came from, and call that door. All right, so now our model has four walls, a roof, a foundation, and a door. Now, we can put in a window, so select the door, I uh, select the wall, go into edit mode, and let's do a couple loop cuts here. I'm going to do a loop cut, whoops, wrong key, uh, control R. And I scroll my mouse once, and I get two lines, and that looks good enough for me. So hit Enter and Escape so you don't move them. And then usually the top of the windows and the top of the doors in a house, they're all level. Okay? I mean, they're the same elevation. So we just need a loop cut for the bottom of the window. So I'm going to hit Control-R, create a loop cut and we can come to the top of the window and we can move that loop cut g z minus one so our window is through uh one meter one meter tall okay now you notice since we copied this poly we moved this polygon to a new collection that loop cut doesn't go through there now okay because it's a totally different object all right now I want to select our window and I want to E extrude and I want to move that in a little bit. There we go. And then with that face selected, hit P selection to move it to a new selection. And we're going to call that window. Okay. 
All right, so we made some edits. Let's get out of edit mode. Um, get out of edit mode. All right. So here's our basic looking house. We only have one door, one window. Uh, you can add more windows and doors and stuff if you want to, but we're not going to for this exercise. Now we need to save our model. And this is where creating that folder comes in. Because what I like to do is I like to organize and I keep my Blender files with my project. All right. So we're going to go to File, Save. And you're going to get this window coming up here. And we are going to migrate over to our project. Tutorials, Tut1, Package Sources, Model Lib. And here's our Tut1 house, so double click that. And I'm going to, I'm actually going to name this Blender file to Tut1 house, exactly how I named the, the folder. Okay, hit enter, save Blender file. So now if you look up here in Blender, you have the path to where you're saving this Blender file. And it's in the same uh, folder as where we're going to export our model to for Flight Simulator, okay, in our model lib. Okay, so let's do a little bit of detail. All right, so let's select with our, let's go into edit, uh, select our roof, go into edit mode, face select, and we want to select our two faces, and we want to give our roof a little bit of little bit of oomph I guess so to speak so with those two faces selected we're gonna move that up with GZ and we're just gonna use our mouse and just move that up just a tad then we're gonna scale hit s I'm just gonna scale it I got the sh I got my shift key down so I can scale with a little bit more precision okay so we scaled our roof so we have a little bit of overhang. Now you notice that we're not touching our house, okay? And we're gonna do that with a modifier, all right? So what we're gonna do is come over here to the wrench for modifiers, and we are going to solidify. And we're gonna give it Point two, I don't know how thick point two is. That's too thick. Let's go point zero five. Okay. So there we have a little bit of thickness to our roof. Okay. I don't know if I like that. But that's good enough. Alright. And we can at edit mode and I'm going to go ahead and apply that now this is not going to be a clean model by any means you know I want it a little bit cleaner so I'm going to hit control Z to undo that and I'm going to undo our solidify all right and we're going to do this a little bit different I'm going to select these two faces. This is how I work, by the way. I change my mind all the time. All right, so I'm going to select these two faces, and I'm going to extrude because I want my I want my fascia to be straight down. All right, so we're going to select those two faces, and let's move let's move our roof down. Let's do GZ and move it back down to where it was before so it's almost touching our house all right and then we're going to hit E to extrude our roof and then drag that up a little bit now that looks better yeah I like that better instead of using the solidify modifier let's not make it complicated all right now with that with this selected we're going to if you select the fascia at the end and hold down the alt key it will select the faces 
on the edge. Now I'm hitting Alt, Shift, so, and then Select. And now I have just the faces that go around our roof. And we're going to hit P and move those to their own collection. I mean, uh, selection. Hit Tab, get out of edit mode. Come over here and let's call this fascia. Okay. And then with fascia selected, let's go into edit mode. Hit Tab. And I'm going to turn X ray on. And these two faces right here, we don't need because nobody's going to see them. So hit the delete and delete the faces and then get out of edit mode. All right, so there's our building fascia. So we got the roof deck and then we have our fascia going around. And then, of course, this is the soffit at the bottom. All right. And then turn off x-ray now let's work on the window so select the window hit tab go to edit mode okay and tilde F will give us a front view okay and let's select just hit a since I only have one polygon or face in that I can hit A to just select it now what we're going to do oh very important Get out, hit tab get out of edit mode notice that our scale is doesn't equal 1 flight sim needs scale applied on your models alright so if if I come out of here I'm not in edit mode and I select everything so all my all my selections are selected I want to apply the scale it has to be at a scale one for it to work properly in Microsoft Flight Simulator so with everything selected go to object go to apply scale and you notice that over here scale goes to one okay so that's very important periodically when you add things to your models make sure that scale is applied so it will work properly in Microsoft Flight Simulator alright so let's go back to our window you can select it in the tree or you can select it by the object go tab to go back into edit mode tilde F will give you the front view now we want to give our window maybe some panes alright uh, so I'm gonna loop cut and let's say it has three panes that way that's enter escape so I don't move it and let's say there's one division down the down the middle so control R hit enter escape so I don't move it now I have six polygons all right now we're gonna make a frame and then we're gonna make glass all right so with face select select all your faces and then hit I twice and you can make your divisions between your glass and your frames okay so we have it like that now after you do the inset with I, two eyes in this case, so each each two eyes allows me to do an inset for each individual face. All right, one eye, one inset would only do the outside. Okay. Now after the after the inset is performed, the interior polygons are always selected, and I'm gonna copy these not copy these I'm gonna move this selection to its own and I'm gonna call that window glass and then our parent window we're gonna call this window frame okay 
get out of edit mode. I'm doing this live, so I'm going to pause every once in a while so I can catch my breath and drink a, have a sip of coffee or something like that. All right, so this is probably another long video. Sorry. All right, so we got our window frames made, and we also have our glass, and we'll come back to why I separated those, okay? Okay, let's go to the foundation and let's select our foundation hit shift and i'm using my mouse shift and moving my model around okay now that's not a shift i'm just rotating it with the middle mouse button now we want to add to our foundation we want to create a stoop for the door okay some steps going up to the door you can have them go in any direction that you want but let's go hit tab go into edit mode Oops. there we go edit mode and we're gonna make uh, control R for a loop cut right there at the door I hit enter but I want to move it over a little bit give our people a little bit extra space to go up the stairs and then I'm gonna put another loop cut and I'm gonna move that over to here then I'm going to select this face and then I'm going to hit E to extrude it and we're going to extrude it out like this okay just like that okay now we're going to make some steps since this is one meter high I believe that we're probably going to have six steps in order to make them around seven and a quarter inches tall each um, it will be close, but like I said, for Flight Simulator, it doesn't absolutely have to be that precise, okay? But anyway, um, I'm going to select these polygons, hit shift, select these polygons here, and that bottom one selected, and we're going to hit P for a new selection, and we're going to call this Stoop. Okay, get out of edit mode, select our sloop, a sloop, <laughs> stoop, go back into edit mode by hitting tap. So now we're working with this block, all right, and we are going to loop cut or subdivide this block in the horizontal direction. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, so we have six um, divisions. Okay, hit enter and then escape so you don't move them. Then I'm going to select these faces. And I'm going to extrude them. And now I'm just going to do it by sight for right now. Okay, so I move those. And then we're going to leave. No, let's, let's control Z to redo this here. I only want this one, this one, this one, this one. And extrude those out. This is not going to be perfect. And then I want these. There's another way you can do this, but I'm just trying to make this as fast as I can. Alright. And move these out like that. Extrude these out like that. And extrude that final one out like that. So now we have our steps. All right. There's other ways to make steps. Matter of fact, there's a plug-in for Blender that allows you to make stairs, which is pretty cool. But we're not here to talk about that. We'll talk about that some other time, maybe. All right. So we have our steps made. Let's get out of edit mode by hitting, whoops, by hitting tab. And so there's our there's our simple house model. Now we're going to apply some materials to it all right so it'll look more like a house I hope okay so we're gonna apply some textures and this is a good time to talk about more free resources I know this video is gonna be long guys and gals but uh, I can't think of any other way to do it 
<laughs> Sorry. Um, all right, so free resources to where to get some textures. A uh, very important thing about textures in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Any textures that you use, the size of the textures, the size of the, the image, has to be multiples of four, such as 512 by 512, 256 by 256, uh, uh, 1024 by 512, or 1024 by 1024, but anyway, you get the picture. So 1K is 1024, 2K is uh, 2048, and is that right? Yeah, 4K is 4096 by 4096. You get the picture, but they're all divisible by four. So any textures you use for Microsoft Flight Simulator have to be divisible by four. The other thing about textures is that you're going to hear the term PBR. Okay, PBR textures. PBR textures are, well, as the name implies, they're physics oriented. Okay, they're physics. The physics of light coming off of the texture works as in almost real life. The way that the light actually hits the texture will determine what it looks like. <clears throat> so usually a PBR texture will have a um, one layer of the texture will have the ambience of what it actually looks like, such as the color of bricks and stuff like that. Then you'll have another layer that um, tells the light which direction to go when it hits it. Okay, Usually it's called the normal. And then you'll have another layer called roughness that kind of gives it its displacement and its look in 3D, all right? So that's the basics of a PBR. I know it's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's the best I can do to try to explain it. So where can you get these PBRs? Well, there's a lot of sites out there, and these are free sites, and I'll put links in the description of the video so you, you know where to go get them, but there's texturecan.com there's texturehaven.com there's uh, cc0textures.com there's freepbr.com and there's one of my favorites is um, cgbookcase.com all right so you can go to any one of those web pages and download free textures to use for your models okay so I'll show you one here this is uh, CG uh, cgbookcase.com so like here's a whole bunch of bricks a uh, whole bunch of marble uh, page after page after page after page here's some steel different types of steel and tiles okay cloth all right and these are all free all right now the it'll tell you the resolution of the image in the in the thumbnail so this is a 4k so the size of this image is going to be 4890 4096 by 4096 okay here's a 2k image which is 2048 by 2048 all right so you can download those free to your machine if you go to categories it shows you it it will organize the view by category so if i go to floor or concrete let's go to concrete and then i can choose which concrete texture i want to use and if i select it, it takes it to its page and it shows you all the different formats that that particular texture comes in, okay? So this, this concrete shows you that it has a ambient occlusion, it has the base color of the concrete, the a height map, which you don't really need for Flight Simulator, because uh, roughness will usually take care of that, and then you have the normal, 
and the normal is how light hits it okay so to download this you would just hit download and it will download the P PNG image to your 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 computer and then you can uh, unzip it and put put it somewhere on your computer that you're gonna always know where your textures are for me I have a uh, folder on my computer called textures where I download all of my textures to my computer so we're getting ready to use textures for our model so I'm going to move some textures over to where they need to be so I can use them okay so I'm going to use let's see brick number five and what I want to do is I want to ex whoops it's actually expanded down here these are all my textures that I have so we're going to go into our tutorial go to package sources go to our model lib so we can see our texture directory there so I'm not going to worry about the normals and the roughness for now I'm just going to use the base colors for now so I'm going to take bricks 5 and I'm going to right click and drop that into my model lib texture directory copy that there and come up to uh, my textures directory and I'm going to select uh, let's see corrugated steel and I want a corrugated steel for the roof and I'm going to move that into my textures directory I'm going to right click and drag and drop that into the textures directory texture directory copy that there and let's see if I have a stone somewhere some I might it may not look good but there's stone right down here let's do stone wall and let's copy that let's copy this stone into our texture directory okay and I want a concrete let's see if we can find a concrete here no, I don't want that one. I don't know. Oh, let's see here. I'm trying to figure out which concrete I want. Yeah, let's go this one. Let's copy this one. It might be too dark, but what we're just we're just messing here. So I'm gonna copy that texture into my texture directory. okay so if we open up our texture directory you see that I've moved uh, four textures into the model lib texture directory those four we're going to use for our house okay so let's minimize that okay so let's put a simple let's select our fascia and let's just make this a simple without doing anything fancy and let's uh, create a new material call that uh, fascia I'm not going to use a texture for this I'm just going to use a system color call it fascia and we'll leave it white and we'll move the roughness all the way up so it's a flat color all right so now that my fascia is white now i'm going to come over here and i'm going to go to viewport shading so we can actually see what our building is going to look like in its actual colors now i could let's go ahead and separate this screen I'm moving this up and then just dragging this over and i'm going to have this pane look like this and have this look like uh, our shading okay so we are going to select the window frame and we're going to give that the same color as our fascia and by default it is all right um, our walls we don't want fascia our roof we don't want fascia our foundation we don't want fascia 
concrete steps we don't want fascia all right even though they're showing up white over here i'm just unassigning by default i had everything with that fascia color so i'm unassigning that part all right now let's do our roof now what we have to do first is we have to uh, unwrap our roof all right that's another thing that you'll have to learn in blender all right so here we have our roof selected and we go into UV editing and we're basically going to unwrap that so we're gonna hit a and I'm going to come up here to UV and use smart UV project I don't want to stretch it and hit OK so that takes our roof and divides it into its component parts on this okay so this has taken all the individual polygons that make up the roof and it splits them out and flattens them out so you can apply your texture now time to apply a texture we're going to create a new material and we're going to call this uh, roof Now here is where the Microsoft plugin comes in, the Flight Simulator plugin comes in for Blender. So if you go down here to MSFS Material Params and expand that, in the Material mode you're going to, now I'll talk about all these at another time, but you're going to select Standard, MSFS Standard, and now you can attach a image to this particular material so we're going to hit open and we're going to uh, toggle over to where okay we're going to toggle up to where our textures folder is which is right here and you can see the list of textures that we copied into that directory and we're going to select corrugated steel because we're working on the roof Okay, and that brings that image in. Now, if I hit shade, notice that they are running uh, in this direction. And we don't want, we want our corrugation to go perpendicular to our front wall, right? So come over here to the UV and hit A to select all those polygons and R. 90 will rotate those okay now those look quite big okay so we're gonna come back over to this view hit s to scale and we're gonna make that smaller out like this and make it look like a corrugated steel roof then come back into layout mode turn our shader on and now our roof looks like it's corrugated okay now it looks two-dimensional right now all right because I have not applied any of the other layers for that particular texture so let's make one little change let's open up our Windows Explorer and uh, this is corrugated steel 005 all right, so let's come back up to our materials and go up to corrugated five. Where is it? There it is, right here. Corrugated steel zero zero five, and let's copy the normal and the roughness. And let's right drag and drop those into the texture directory of our model in. Okay, minimize this. Then we're going to come, we're going to, we still have our roof selected. Go back to UV editing and come down here to where we assigned our corrugation to our FS, FS, MS, FS standard. And you notice that you have a slot for roughness and you have a slot for normals. So if you hit open for roughness, 
migrate over to your textures directory and select the roughness in open image okay so that adds a second layer of image for the roof now we want to do the normals so do the same thing go to click open migrate to your textures directory and select the normal PNG and add that so now this texture has three layers. It has one for the color, has one for the roughness, and has one for how the light's gonna hit it. Now let's go back into layout and see how our roof looks, okay? It looks a little bit more three-dimensional, even though it's not three-dimensional. That normal allows the light to hit it to give it that three-dimensional appearance. Okay, so our roof is uh, done for this exercise, I guess. Let's start to do the walls, okay? And so we have our walls. And go into edit mode. Yep, yeah, there we go. Now, good thing about, a good thing to do is to eliminate the number of polygons that you're dealing with, if you can. Sometimes you can't, sometimes you can. Since we're not going to subdivide these walls anymore, let's go ahead and go into edit mode by hitting tab. Got my walls selected. And I'm selecting faces. And I'm going to select these faces here. Select a face, hit shift. And then I'm going to right click and dissolve the faces. Oh, that didn't work. I know. I know. Wait a minute. I can't do it with that many, I don't think. There we go. Just eliminate uh, some of the polygons if you can. Okay. So I think I can dissolve these three into one. Yeah, there we go. Now, since, uh, since this face has a hole in it, I don't think it will, but we can actually move, we can actually dissolve those three into one. Okay. Now, so, like I said, since this polygon would have a hole in it, it's gonna put a, it's gonna put a divider in there anyway, so that's why it didn't dissolve with the other ones. All right, so let's select these three. We can actually select all these. I didn't do that yet. And let's right click, dissolve faces, select these. I'm just holding the shift key and clicking polygons and then dissolve faces. So we have less polygons. Okay, now like what we did with our, like we did with our, let's hit tab, get out of edit mode. Like we did with our roof, let's go into UV editor, select all those polygons for our, because our, our walls are selected, okay, our wall uh, layer is selected. Select all of our walls by hitting A, and then go to UV, smart UV project, and then hit OK, and all of our wall polygons show up over here. Now we're going to assign our bricks to these walls okay now our bricks i know i'm going to hit a select all those polygons and rotate that minus 90 degrees to have them all standing up this one here i'm going to select islands select this one and then i'm going to rotate this one uh 180 Whoops, 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 whoops. Just one. Oh, those are connected. That's right. Uh, they'll be fine. It'll be fine. Let's let's not worry about that right now. Because I didn't I didn't put any seams, so these are connected. So I can go into my model, select an edge, and create a seam and cut that. Okay. Like I said, it's not a blender tutorial. Um so Find a video about UV unwrapping your model.
to apply textures and it'll talk about creating seams on how to slice it up and stuff all right anyway i digress so let's just kind of move these a little bit like no i want to select all and then move i'm such a whiner all right so here we have our wall selected we have it uv unwrapped now we need to apply an, a, a texture to it. So I'm going to come over here, select new. I'm going to call this texture bricks. And then we're going to come down to our MSFS uh, params. I'm going to enable standard. And then I'm going to go look for a texture for albedo or our color. Hit open. Go into our textures directory, select brick 5, open image, and our bricks get applied to our model. However, they are not to scale, right? They're pretty gigantic bricks, right? I mean, if you're doing a, an Egyptian pyramid or something, they might be fine. So we're going to come over to our texture layout here with our polygons and we're going to hit S with all the polygons that are selected and remember hit A if you want to select all the polygons and then hit S to scale and our bricks will come to size and I'm just going to eyeball it okay and then let's go into layout and let's see what that looks like yeah doesn't look too bad and you can get really particular and and move faces to make edges match and stuff like that you know these bricks don't line up very good but if I go into uh, UV editor and I move my model here and zoom in I can select this face okay and I can move it in the make sure you do your moving over here if you move it over here it actually moves your model so over in the UV view if I hit G Y I can move that just those faces up and down to make that line up better kind of like that all right you get the picture so let's go back into layout mode all right so now we have our house that has brick walls and I have a corrugated roof Okay, now let's work on the foundation. We're going to make it a stone foundation, and the stones will be almost the same color as the bricks. All right, so let's select that. There is no material. So let's go to our UV editing with our foundation selected. Zoom out here and select all those polygons by hitting A. And then UV smart UV project hit OK and then we get our polygons over here for our foundation and let's with a mouse over here select all the polygons and let's rotate those minus 90 or 90 depends on whichever way it uh, unwrapped it hit G kind of move those over a little bit now we want to apply our stone to our foundation so we're going to create a new image, I mean new material, called stone. And then we're going to come down to our MSFS params, choose standard, come down to albedo and open our stone texture in our textures directory, stone wall, image, all right, so now we have stone. Okay, and then we're going to over here in our UV, our UV unwrap view, select all our polygons and hit S to scale. And just make the rocks a certain size to make them look pleasing. Okay. Now, one thing that you'll notice that it takes that image and tiles it on your on your polygons so if you don't like that look you might have to do something to your model to fix that appearance but like I said it's not a blender tutorial 
Now let's make our concrete steps. We're going to go to UV editing, uh, select all of our polygons, smart project, hit OK. We have all of our polygons out there and create a new material called concrete. Come down to our MSFS params standard. And open an albedo and migrate over to our textures directory and choose concrete image that we have in there. See what that looks like without scaling it. It it's all right. It's all right for what we're doing. Okay. Oh, it's a good idea to save. There you go. So now you don't lose all your changes. Okay. Two more things to uh, apply textures to or do something to them. Uh, we need to do the doors and then the window glass and then we're ready to export this and bring it into the sim. Now I'm not going to put a doorknob or anything like that on the door. But let's go get a texture for the door. Let's make it a wood plank door. Alright, so let's go where our textures are. And wood. Uh, no, let's make it a solid wood door. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to drop this into my textures directory, my texture directory. Copy that there. Minimize that. Select our door. Okay. Go to a UV editor. Select our polygon. Go to UV smart project. So now we have our door. And let's come up here to create a new material. Ah, it has fascia material assigned to it. Let's get rid of that by hitting the X. Create a new material. And we'll call that uh, wood. And then come down to the MSFS params. Choose standard. Go down here to the albedo layer. Open and go to our textures directory choose our wood open all right so now we have our wood and it looks like it's i don't like that orientation so let's select all and rotate that 90 degrees hit g move that over here and oh i think that looks let's Let's scale it up a little bit. So hit S, scale that just a tad. Then we can go back into layout and see what it looks like. So we've got a wood slab door. Okay, and the final thing to do is the window glass itself. Okay, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator Blender has a couple different ways that you can do glass. Okay, so let's choose the glass and then get rid of the fascia material that's assigned to the glass by hitting the X all right and create a new material called glass and then come down to the MSFS params expand that out and then go to the select and you'll notice you'll notice that one says MSFS glass all right. If we choose this in Blender, our windows will actually go away. You won't be able to see them. All right. You can use MSFS standard and have a texture that looks like glass, but when you bring it into the sim, it, it won't look it won't look great, okay? You can also do windshield, but that's a different thing. Hey, um Full Moon Party video on YouTube has a great video about working with uh, Microsoft MSFS Glass and Windshield. Okay, so check out Mark's video on that. Or you can also look at Flying Theston, and he has um, a video of working with Glass. All right, 
So I'm going to choose MSFS glass. Okay. Now you notice how our windows went away. There's there's see-through, but you can't see the characteristics that we're going to assign to the glass. Those characteristics won't show up until you get them into the sim. But we're going to come up here. So now we have MSFS glass. And I'm going to change the color, the albedo of the glass. And we're going to kind of make it a little darker. And I'm going to give it the alpha multiplier. I'm going to call it 0.5. So it's semi-translucent. Okay. And if you notice, if you go up here and look at the base color, here's our base color of the glass that I chose. And then this box right here shows the level of transparency based on that alpha number that I just typed in. Now, if you want your windows to be kind of shiny, okay, move your roughness down and you can move your metallic up. So the higher you put your metallic, if you put it all the way up, it's going to look like a mirror, all right? But if you back it off, it'll kind of give it some shininess and the roughness, move that down and make it more, more slick, so to speak. Okay, so that's our building with some basic materials assigned. Kind of gives you an idea how you do that. Now it's time to put our house into the sim. Okay, it is time to export our house out to the simulator. Okay, so you want to select all the objects by hitting A. So all the objects are selected. If you have some objects that you don't need, make sure that they're unselected. All right. So here we have our house selected, all the components. Now you're going to go to File, Export, and then Extended GLTF 2.0 for MSFS. Select that and you'll get another menu. Okay, now make sure that you're in your uh, your model lib uh, model directory. Okay, in our case tut1 one, uh, tut one house. This name right here We, I have, I always have it the same name as the directory. This is our export file name. All right, so I'm going to call this Tut One House, and then over here in the textures, you're going to hit period period forward slash texture slash. All right, so that tells tells the export that's going to get all of our. Uh, textures from our texture directory in our model lib folder okay and then you're gonna click the remember export so next time you uh, if you make a mo uh, change to this model and you export it these all these settings get saved okay so remember that and then the MSFS you're going to generate append an XML because every model needs an XML and this is going to be the exact same name as your uh, export name or your model name which is tut one house hit enter make sure you hit enter in these spaces now you want to generate a GUID a GUID is an is an unique identification number for every object that's in the sim okay and this is uh, this plugin will go out and create the the GUID for your model. There's other ways to create a GUID, but I'm not going to talk about those in this particular video series. Okay, but make sure that you check generate GUID so it assigns a unique number value 
letter number value to this particular model. I'll show you what the GUID looks like, but I'm not going to show you other ways to create them. So anyway, check generate GUID. In the include, we want selected objects and any custom properties that you've done in Blender. For transform, you're going to leave that uh, there. For geometry, you want to apply any modifiers. Okay, so if you have solidify modifiers, array modifiers, subdivision modifiers, you want to apply those um, if you have not applied them in Blender. Okay, and then just leave tangents off because if you do tangents, it's gonna, it's not gonna break your export it just Microsoft Flight Simulator won't be able to handle them so but just leave it unchecked okay and then hit the export extended GTLF now before I do that I want to open up okay and we're gonna go into our package sources go into our model lib go into our house in our house, we only have our Blender file right now. So when I do the export, three new files will be written to this, this folder. I'll show you here in a second. So click the export extended. And then the export process starts. And since this is a small model, it doesn't take very long. So it's pretty much done. So if I go over here to Windows Explorer, you notice now we have a bin, we have a GLTF, and we have an XML. All right. And the model size is going to be uh, 31K plus the 16. Okay. So your model is now exported and ready for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now to get your model into Flight Simulator, you have to do one more step. You can do this step two different ways, and I like this step first, okay? Now, do you remember when we copied this fspackagetool.exe into the folder? This is where this comes in handy. Remember, you can build your package inside the sim or outside the sim. If you build your package inside the sim in order to at least since the past couple updates if you build inside your sim in order to get the new stuff into the sim for you to look at you have to get out of the sim and then come back into the sim and reopen the project that's kind of a pain in the butt so what I like to do is when I make my models is I build them outside of the sim so so I only need to go into the sim once okay so that's why I put the FS package tool.exe into my project folder all right now in the in the package sources we have the model lib in the model lib we have our textures texture folder and we also have our house okay so come back up here to tut1 and grab this xml right here this tut1 xml and drag that on top of that executable and release then you're going to get a window that comes up I'm not going to bring the window over here because it will mess up my recording but you're going to get a window that shows up on your screen and it's going to be blank for a while because we are building our package okay outside of the sim so it takes longer so after that's done building I'll show you what we get so the build is done and in the window you get at the end it will say press any key to continue and it'll tell you if you had any failures now also always outside of the sim unless until you apply a um, an image for that content info you'll always get one error one failed but outside that sim 
one failed is okay, all right? So we finished our build, we've closed that window and clean up some house here. All right, I'm gonna do one final save here and then I'm gonna close Blender. All right, we're gonna get into the sim and bring our house into the simulator.